Hello, everybody. Welcome to an amazing conversation today. My name is Bettina Gordon Wayne. I'm a journalist, best selling author, and creator of the It's Never Too Late to Live Your Dreams series. And today is the second installment on our series on feminine leadership, which is now more important than ever. I so strongly feel, and it's my true honor that I have with me today, again, Prasanna Diana Manuela, the expert in feminine leadership that is so embodied and brings together the wisdom of the ages into this modern world today. And she joins us from the other side of the world, from Australia again. And I'm so glad that we can con continue this immensely, immensely important conversation. So, Prasanna, welcome. Good morning to you. Good morning to me. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me back, Bettina. It's always such a pleasure. Um, so just a few words. Um, I'm an international best-selling author of the book, Elemental Woman and Feminine Prosperity Creatrix and, and also an international speaker. So I support conscious women um, in business to awaken their heart's calling, to lead with an open heart and deep wisdom and leave a legacy. And um, as we've already discussed, um, Bettina, it, this is not needed. It's never been needed more than now. So that's kind of, yeah, where we're at. And I think what's our focus today in the conversation is extremely important because we're talking about wealth and wellness and why these two important parameters in our lives do not have to be mortal enemies. Yes. But in the past, they often were. Yeah, and especially for a woman, because the model that we've been given as a leader is the masculine model. And it's all about, it's, it's entirely based on masculine principles, which is push till you drop, push to success, goal oriented. The goal is the most important thing. So what we have found is that women trying very hard to succeed and be financially successful and having unconsciously adapted masculine principles because that's all we've been given for hundreds of years really um, she has completely worn herself out because a woman functions very differently to a man and we need to understand the way she leads therefore needs to be different also so her health doesn't suffer question please so how does a woman do that um, so for many years I lived in New York City. This is a very testosterone driven environment with companies that have their hierarchy, they have the corporate culture. And when a woman comes in, you mean you, you cannot just change the culture. You know, you come in and it's like, okay, now here I am. It's you have to conform to what's going on or in the past at least we often had to. And there's this saying, I hope I don't butcher it now because I say it in English, but that the, the women had to be the better man. Yes. And I've been, you know, so, so many conversations with women that they say they were so testosterone driven, like yes. working on Wall Street. And then literally they had more testosterone searching through their bodies because of the work that they had to do. So how, how do you do this? How do we come now into a culture that is so ingrained with the masculine principles and start changing it? How do we do this? Yeah, it's really difficult. I don't think we are able to change it from within the system at this point. Uh, it has to come from within. It has to come from women understanding that they're functioning differently. Mm -hmm. We simply are different to men. <clears throat> and of course, education is really, really helpful. So once the conversation gets out more, and here's the thing. Once men understand that their life, they benefit from their woman really being in their feminine power, they will listen and they will change. Because every man will tell you if they're, if they're partnered with a woman who is driven professionally in her masculine, generally the polarity between two partners will die sooner or later because you've got two masculine energies colliding. There's no attraction any longer. The woman's power is in receptivity and the man is the, 
you know, the masculine, not so much the man, but the masculine is a penetrative force. Now, if you both have a penetrative force, it's like, you know, the two magnets that can't meet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and so in a sense, once, once the, you know, the information is more commonly understood that everyone benefits if a woman thrives and a woman mostly thrives in her feminine, not her masculine, then we can start shifting things a bit more. And I think what you're describing is what many women are actually feeling that they no longer want to be the better man. And that there is very often a shift that as in I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the data right in front of me right now, but the majority of small businesses around the world, and I think it's 60 or 70%, something really big of small businesses is actually led by women, by women who don't want to play that game with the, with, with, with the boys any longer because they instinctively or they just know this is not what I want to do. They, they may have been done doing it for the last 20 years, but now saying, okay, this is, this is, this is enough. I want something other. So, I mean, it's easier for if you're self-employed to start implementing those, those principles, right? Yeah. Look, I'm so excited about that. You know, I've had lots of conversations about this with another journalist as well, quite frequently, because, you know, in, in the corporate world, it's very hard for a woman actually to, to have equal chances to a man unless she outmans the man, right? <laughs> so, and so in a sense, we've bypassed it. So it's a lot of women going, off that, I'm, don't, I'm going to do my own show. Because there I can do it my way, right? And so I think this is just absolutely fabulous because we have found a way that works for us. And of course, a woman's life generally is very different to a man's, especially if she raises a family, because we juggle so many priorities, equally as important priorities in our life. You know, we, we need to do it in a way that works for us. Then please let's go into in into the principles in the way that you are teaching them because you've been teaching these principles around the world, not just in Australia. And what I find so beautiful is that you bring the spiritual teachings from from uh, uh, people like the, the the Aborigines. You take them to their holy mountain, the people that you're often working with, to Uluru, and and you know you you offer not just the business education but much more than that. Um, how do you help now the women to see or bring in harmony their desire to be successful in their work, thus become wealthy, with their desire to do it in a sustainable way that keeps their mind, body, and soul well? That's a very big question. <laughs> it's a really big question. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it is because it's I look at it. Also, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first of all, um, what I'm really passionate about is not primarily that people are wealthy, but they live from total alignment with their soul calling, mm. because we there's a contract why we have incarnated into this plane right now, and we have um, there is on a deeper level. On a deeper level, we know what that is. And the way I look at it and the way I see it, it is working with a woman's life force because her life force is her soul force who knows exactly why she's here. Now, we've been conditioned to be completely in our head and make our decisions with this very narrow way of looking at things from our mind. There's a much bigger part of ourselves, and that is the soul force. Now, my work is really about helping people, helping women to get in touch with that. And so in, I'm starting to link it together for you. So our soul force, our life force is actually our sexual energy. It's the same thing because we were created by sexual energy. And so as we <clears throat> start to heal that and a woman knows how to use that sexual energy to actually regenerate her, she also becomes in touch with her soul calling. So what happens is she's able to read her guidance in a different way, not just from that narrow place of her head, from her mind, but from a bigger place of a bigger knowing her. Like some people would say it's the higher self or whatever, but for me, it's the soul force. It's the soul actually remembering why she is here. And I, and, 
I can only access that that remembrance through sexual what? To through having sex or what? <laughs> like, we okay, we're having this conversation during a pandemic when the libido left many months ago and has not been back yet. So my question, like what? This is the only okay. way. Or what? So, so okay. I'm screwed. I'm not in the right no. way. <laughs> Let's go back. Sexual energy is the same thing as life force. It's the same thing as soul force. It's the same energy. It's that, okay. it's, that, it's that energy that makes us alive. Because when we die, that energy goes. It's gone. <laughs> right? And so in a sense, what we need to understand is that that, just doesn't, that doesn't just get activated by sex. It's like it's, it's actually our oh. nature to have this life force abundantly alive and in most women that energy is really shut down really shut down the only time a woman thinks about her womb is basically when she wants to get pregnant or she is pregnant or she's just recovering from pregnancy or she's menstruating right but there is so much more that power is so great it can actually regenerate us if we know how to tap into it so how do i do that if it's not science. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. Give me. Well, I can teach, well, I can teach you that. You know, that's basically what I teach. I help women to really get in touch with their life force because I just don't think you can live an aligned life if it's only based from your head. There's a bigger part. And that I think that's what's happening in the world at the moment is this feminine awakening. And the awakening is we awakening to parts of ourselves that have been dormant. Now, for me, you know, Back to my story, 1995, I lost my baby two days after birth and my recovery was enormously slow. It was just so slow. I had, my cycles had huge trouble coming back. And at the time I was running a complimentary health center as a yoga therapist and preparing uh, women to birth their babies naturally, right? By tapping into their um, feminine power, into their sexuality, into their, you know, their, their bodies, wisdom, really. Mm -hmm. And so what happened when my health had such trouble recovering, I had lots of conversations with women. I realized that most women are struggling today with, with women's problems. And we've accepted this to be normal that women have infertility or they have trouble birthing naturally or they have menopausal issues or they have problems with their cycles. They don't have cycles. They have erratic cycles. We've just accepted that this is a normal thing. Or we put it in a box called women's problems. But my, my, the way I look at it is it's not normal. It should not be accepted as normal. Something's gone wrong. And so for, that's the whole part of us is to reclaiming who we really are and function fully and, and, and in a live way, a radiant way as a woman. And so we have to learn how to really get back into that embodied state versus head overwhelmed state. Okay, so let me ask you just one more time. <laughs> <laughs> just let me one more time so it's not that my life force gets awakened necessarily through sexual intercourse True. we are doing it in how i mean just again give me a little bit you know like yeah, yeah. for me sexual energy is connected with making love with my partner that's when yeah. sexual energy is released or you know or you you know, do hopefully, it yourself, but hopefully it doesn't always happen. <laughs> right, exactly. Hopefully, yeah. Or you do it yourself and have more success, maybe. But, yeah, but I guess it's, it's true too, but for a lot of women, actually. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, but is that the only way? No. What, what no, else? Of course not. The, a woman's power is in her pelvis. And when you're looking at a lot of women today and watch the women in corporate world, their pelvis is really, really tight. They don't even use their pelvis. Mm -hmm. Now you look at a lot of um, indigenous cultures and you notice that the women's way of the hips is right? much softer. Mm -hmm. And you look at, uh, you look at indigenous, indigenous uh, um, traditional dances there's a lot of hip movement generally. Like I was delighted when I went to Hawaii uh, and I, I learned some of the local dances, how much hip movement there was. You know, it's like, it, it actually, it's like it's oiling a woman's sensuality and sexuality and it keeps her organs, her sexual organs alive and hydrated, right? And we, as a Western woman, we don't even do that anymore. We just rush. And yes. so a lot of the movements we do is... <laughs> 
it's like there's no, no sensuality, no playfulness about it. So a woman needs to dance every day. She needs to use her hips when she walks. Really go get in, get into the hips. Live inside your hips. You know, and that's a reprogramming. That's actually reprogramming. So you know, in in I remember. Um, <laughs> One of my retreats, actually it happened in a few retreats and, you know, there was one retreat, a woman who did the, the retreat and she sent me an email later. She said, oh my God, I've had the best sex ever with my husband after coming away from your retreat. Mm -hmm. It's not because we're covering sex or we're we doing, this is a sex workshop, not, not at all, but it is about helping women getting into their body, fully embodying themselves. Mm -hmm. fully embodying yourself so and i hear that again and again you know and it's just through some of the practices that i do take them through it's like there's another part that awakens and as they become more embodied they remember who they are and they tap into their inner calling that then propels them forward i love the conversation because you know i am uh, deeply connected to the conversation of ageism and how we women really completely changed the narrative about what does it mean for a woman to march through her years and get wiser with age. And uh, the woman that enters a room and everybody looks at her, you know, it's usually not the 20 year old, you know, it's the one that arrives, turned on, I would say. Yes. You know? turned on and this is the one who found her calling she's yes. the one exactly that that you are describing and she and she enters a room and people and everybody keeps noticing her and after a while you think like oh my god she's not 20 because you have 20 year old beautiful beautiful human beings but you wouldn't look twice because they don't have the personality but you are talking about the woman who is alive and found that soul calling and is living it yeah so Fortunate, it's just beautiful powerful amazing. it is what, ha what happens is it increases your presence because if you're only here with your head such a big part of you isn't here it's just dormant asleep not there and so as you awaken a woman to all of the, all the dimensions of who she is wow the light goes on and when she goes into a room you do notice her and you go i want to know this woman there's an intriguing thing about her, right? <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. So that is the woman. So this is, okay. So through the full embodiment, what does, it, what's the, what does the full embodiment even mean? That you are using your body or what does that exactly mean? When you say, <laughs> this is the thing. It's like, you can't really, you don't know till you've experienced it. That's the thing. Most people, most women have never, you know, I remember they, I had a conversation about a woman who, uh, a coach a few years ago wanted to do um, my, my retreat. And she said, well, what is this going to give me that other things that I've done? I've done so much training, so many courses are not going to give me. I said, look, it's like a missing piece and you have to experience it. It's not something like the mind, you just give it a piece and it gets it. But because this is different, you know, it's like I, I work with, you know, if it's a retreat, it'll be like over three days. Or if it's like a training, it'll be over, you know, a f several weeks or whatever, because there's an entrainment. There is actually a reprogramming and it's not a quick thing. It's a gradual thing. You can't just get it like that. Yes. Yeah. So we have to understand that because it's a part of us that's asleep and dormant. So if I tell you, so, you know, it's like your mind's trying to grasp it, but it's only the mind, right? Because you, you don't know. Yes, yes, yes. And it's something that you also have to practice, I'm guessing. The more you yes. practice swaying yes. your hands, the better you get at it. Well, it's like anything. It's like anything. Reprogramming takes time. And because we've been pushed into a masculine system for such a long time, such a very long time, it's like we have not really been in our home power, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like it just takes time to, to go, wow, that's what I'm supposed to be. I mean, pretty much every woman that I've worked with always says, oh, my God, this feels like home it's I can't believe it's so easy now that I know it's so easy how come I didn't know that it's because we've been disconnected from our own power for such a long time please can you give me some concrete examples so you 
what I'm hearing is that you start with the women and helping them to get in their bodies and unearth that soul calling that, you know, they, they, deep inside we all know what we want to bring forth. Yes. Because they have forgotten and need to find it again. And that is through yeah. full embodiment. And then what comes next? Because when we have the wealth and wellness, what will a woman do differently in her work, in her career, to sustain her wellness moving forward? Can you give us some, some just concrete examples? Yes. So but basically, there's a shift from running the show entirely from your head and running the show more from a body knowing, which means a tremendous amount of nervous energy is not needed. Right. That's why we have a lot of women these days completely exhausted because their adrenals are exhausted. They've been running it really hard. So once you're actually getting into an embodied state, you can make very quick decisions and they're always correct because your body is never wrong. Your mind can screw you around back to front. You will find 10 things for and 10 things against the same decision. But your body just knows, I've got this gut feeling. I just know this is right. And so what happened <clears throat> is that instinct? Yes, it's, she's, she's dropping into an instinctual being. As she be in, is more embodied, she really drops into her instinctual being that we, by and large, are disconnected from. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more to it. And that is that a woman is much more like the earth. You know, the earth is, is cyclic. We have seasons, we have daily cycles, we have moon cycles, we have seasonal cycles. And a woman is actually created to be like the earth. Our menstrual cycle is, is supposed to be in harmony with, with the moon cycle. You know, the tide goes in and the tide goes out. And a woman is designed that way. And we've completely ignored the fact that as a woman, we are cyclic beings just like the earth, we have seasons, you know, like the seasons throughout the uh, life is yeah. the same. It's the same. We have seasons and cycles. And so in a sense, I teach women how to run their businesses, really honoring their cyclic being. We're different at different times of the month. We, we are actually a different woman at different times of the month. Yes, the energy level is very different. That's the reason why sometimes you can go outside and run 5k no problem or go to the the spinning and don't do that but i've heard some people do <laughs> you go to go to a spin class and you can rock it and a week later you think you can't even get on that bike that's exactly. because of our hormones this yes we're talking yes. about has a, has a daily impact on us and we're all exactly not exactly so when we understand how we really function and we start to align more to the natural feminine flow what women will learn, you know, that, I mean, that's why I've even created a calendar app for the phone, right? Because for women to learn to go, okay, we're now in this cycle of the month. So the energy is really introverted. So therefore I see less clients or I work slower or I'm, I may just work half days or I take a day off. And then as the energy starts to build again, sorry, as the energy starts to build again, I can do use that energy in a different way. So I've actually created a template of, in a business sense, how to use the energy at different times of the month because it's so entirely different. Now, let me just ask you because I'm sure some of our, our viewers are listening to this, and but they, in their mind, because also of our conditioning, it is very often a nuisance to have our period. Yes. It's perceived as a handicap. Yes. That our hormones go up and down and we have PMS and, you know, everybody says, oh, you're turning into your evil twin and such. It's actually <laughs> something that we are often not wanting and we push it away because we think it's, it's not just an inconvenience, but it's Pain also... in the bum. That's what we think, right? <laughs> Right, 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 right. So in order to honor these life cycles, we have to really shift about the way we think about it, not just somebody else, but us. It's exactly right. And again, there's conditioning there because the, the masculine is every day is the same. You get up, put your shoes on, and you run as fast as you can till the day is over, right? But a woman's different every day. 
we get up one day, we feel different to tomorrow, and then the next day we're different again. And so in a way, understanding, it's like a woman really understanding herself. She can then love the gifts that these different cycles bring. So for example, you, you, you voiced menstruation, which is a challenge when you're leading, when you're running a business, more challenging even when you're in the corporate world because you pressed into this system. So once you understand though, how you can support yourself throughout the cycle, I often say to women, a week before the period is really, really essential. If you haven't made time to be with you, to listen, to be with your emotions, to process your emotions, you have to do it the week before you even enter into menstruation because it's a letting go time. If you don't clean out your emotional life, then you are going to turn into the evil twin. <laughs> you're going to be a danger to the world so it's really you know because we're more emotional beings so it's part of it is to really listen and be and understand and for that you need to slow down and be inside your body and really go okay prasanna how are you in this very moment and be with it don't run away from it but be with it so then when you enter into what I call the water element, which is menstruation, and it's this resting period, if you've cleaned out your rubbish before, you can enter that dreaming period and when you're actually in that space of menstruation, um, clean. And then it becomes a resting and highly instinctive time where you can have insights into your life purpose more than any other time mm -hmm. of the cycle. It's a profound time. It's a gift for a woman, an absolute gift, but we have to know how to use our power. And we need to look at it in the entire cycle. Yes, yes, thank you. Like many of, uh, of a lot of what you're describing right now, I actually learned from a Native American warrior woman, my work with her 20 years ago, which was oh. really, really beautiful. So, um, to, 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 to summarize, like two really, really important, important points is that what we're talking today may sound, when you're talking about business, and slightly woo-woo, because this is usually not what, what we're discussing in, in yes. conversations around business, our menstrual cycles, but by taking a step back and choosing to live a more feminine-led life, there are huge advantages that we can, can, should, must, what, how, how, what, what, whatever word you want to use, um, use to our advantage on so many levels. Like you said, okay, so uh, by feeling the pelvic, pelvic area and moving your hips, I mean, and many other things that we can do in order to, you know, bring the life force up, we are calming our nervous system don't need all that frantic energy and make decisions, business decisions, life decisions quicker. Yes. And often smarter. Yes. Correctly. You know, and align, align, just align decisions. Yes, yes, yes. And by heating our cycles, everything that you, that you uh, said before, we can use to our advantage without running in the hamster wheel all the time. Yes, exactly. So it's a difference between pushing from day to day to flowing. And it, it, the flowing comes through no, knowing how to use that vehicle, which is our body. And you, you did say this was correct. I mean, it's con people try to avoid these conversations. But here's the thing. The body is the first environment we live in. If we are in conflict with our body, we're in conflict with our life because our body is our life. And I believe business needs to fit into life and not life into business, right? We can live without business, but we can't live without life, without our body. So that needs to be honored first. And I do think I want to see that happen globally over the next umpteen years. I want to see that change of really honoring that and honoring woman woman is in her power and in her fullness, in her radiance, in her beauty, in her wisdom that we so desperately need in the world when she is fully embodied, when she's fully owning her feminine power. It is so magnificent. Yes. And what you're saying that gets me so excited again 
is also the, the older we get, the wiser we get. Usually the mentality is, oh, my body is going to decline. And what you're saying, no, by, by loving ourselves and living in harmony and making our bodies our first priority, our first home, being res yeah. in resonance and loving ourselves, the trajectory of the next whatever decades to come is so much more beautiful and so much more powerful. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So both we, we both talk about that a lot. For me, I always talk about the wise woman leadership and you talk about it's never too late. So we're kind of on the same page here. The thing is, if you're a woman in your 40s or 50s and you think it's too late to live your dream, think again. Because your life is only just starting. <laughs> only just starting and if you feel worn out and tired and exhausted find a way that brings you back to life live it differently you know i have had women come to me completely worn out running two businesses and whatnot and they wanted to create a new business with me and i worked with these women for like a year and watching their regeneration over that year you know and whether they were like nearly 60 or whether they were in their 40s or whether in the 50s it's so delightful it's possible you can do this thank you so much that was the perfect way to to end our conversation and of course please let us know how to find you the best way but we will link in the you know in the show yeah. notes in the up left right up down <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have a link for you. So first of all, I have this delicious gift for you. And that is uh, my Activate Your Fame, Fortune and Freedom practice. Um, well, the link will be below. And the other thing I want to invite you is into my free online sacred uh, workshop space. Um, the link will be below as well. It's a private Facebook group. I've actually just created it. I've been I've had this impulse to live stream my trainings into that. So invite your women friends to that. And I, I, uh, re I requested being led in today already. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's so exciting because I've already just opened this space up and I've already seen so many beautiful faces in there. So it's going to be really exciting and we're going to, um, you know, have regular trainings in there. So I'll look forward to meeting you there and feel into your heart's calling, feel into your desire. You're so worth it. 100%. Yes. Thank you so much. And please join us for the, our third conversation in this amazingly important female leadership realm and how we do it the best way. Thank you so much for being here with me today and until soon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye, Bettina. Bye.